How did you get here today? Did you use the GPS in your car for directions? Or did you use a rideshare app on your mobile phone? Or maybe you were late because you were running around Kings Park chasing Pokemon. <laughs> All of these are possible because of spacecraft up there, which help us find our way and do many other things. Space is a big part of everyday life. I've always loved space. <laughs> when I was a boy, I used to play with space Lego. I used to build rockets out of cardboard boxes and used to run around and pretend to be Luke Skywalker. I remember at school we had to write letters to prospective employers. Now this was in the days before the internet where you actually had to write a letter and post it in a, in a post box. Students were writing to banks and law firms. I wrote to NASA about being an astronaut. And two months later, I received a pamphlet in the mail with all of the criteria. One of those was that you had to be a US citizen. So that was a turning point for me. And I took the pamphlet, put it in a drawer, tucked it away, and forgot about it. I went on to have a career in technology after studying computer science. But in 2015, I was made redundant. Another turning point for me. What do I do now? Space had changed over the years, and I started to think, could my experience and skills be used in the new space race? So I began to explore all the opportunities and possibilities. I attended the International Space University where I met Flavia Tartanardini, a successful Australian space entrepreneur. And she inspired me that anything is possible. So I've started my own company up, building spaceships, right here in Perth. Like many of you, I used to think that you needed to be a rocket scientist or an astronaut to work in space, but you don't. <laughs> and I'm certainly not. Space is essentially about hope for the future. So let's have a look at how you can be a part of that future. I'll share with you a little bit of what I've learned. And we'll look at three areas. Humans in space. The infrastructure or things of space. And the business of space. Now I mentioned having to be a US citizen be an astronaut. Australian Andy Thomas did exactly that. He moved to the US, became a citizen, and he's flown into space many times. So with a lot of change and sacrifice, that is possible. But there's another way. You can become a space tourist. In the next year or two, companies like Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin are offering short trips into space where you'll go up, spend five minutes in weightlessness, and come back to the ground. And all it will cost is $250,000. <laughs> so I guess you've just got to sell your house or, or buy a lot of lottery tickets. Now, once you're in space, the human body is exposed to a lot of threatening conditions. Weightlessness causes muscle mass loss and bone loss and can affect your eyesight. The radiation up there is amplified because you've left the safety of the Earth, and this can impact on your DNA and brain function. And you're far away from friends and family and stuck with the same bunch of astronauts for a long period of time. So your behavior and your mental health well-being can be impacted. If you're a doctor, a biologist, or a psychologist, you can help to address these challenges and become part of the new space race. Now let's have a look at the infrastructure of space. Earlier I asked you how you got here, and I was referring to GPS satellites and the location information they provide. How else can you use this location information? Could you write the next Pokemon Go app? If you're an app developer, then your skills are needed in the new space race. Satellites take pictures of the Earth every day. And there's a lot of information in these pictures. For example, on the nightly news, you see the cloud cover in the weather reports. That's an example of 
satellite imagery. How else can you use this imagery? Can you use it to monitor coastal erosion in Perth's beaches? Or maybe track pollution in the Swan River? If you're an environmentalist, you can do a lot of good with these images. Geologists in the outback exploring for minerals need to stay in touch. How do they do that? They use satellite phones. Satellites allow you to stay in contact with people in remote locations. An example of this is telemedicine, where doctors can provide medical consultations using satellite video links to remote communities. If you can provide similar services, for example, counselling via a satellite video link, you too could be a part of the new space race. Now, maybe you're a geek like me and you're really into science. Here at the University of Western Australia, they're working on the Square Kilometre Array, a multi-billion dollar international project to build the world's largest radio telescope. So if you're into research and you don't mind wearing a white lab coat, then this is the place for you and you can help to uncover the mysteries of the universe. Or maybe you're more into exploration. Do you fancy building the next space rover? If so, do you have skills in vehicle suspension systems or in metal fabrication? If you do, you can help to explore uncharted planetary environments. Or maybe you just want to build stuff and send it hurtling through space really fast. If, if you're a mechanical engineer or if you have experience with solar energy, you can help to build future space stations. And if you have experience in advanced materials like carbon fibre or metal alloys, you can help build rockets which need to be lightweight and strong. And if you're a student studying science, technology, engineering and maths at school and learning to program on Arduino or Raspberry Pi computers, then you have a future as a satellite designer. And if you're a mining engineer, well, your skills are needed to help develop the next load of spacecraft that will go out to explore and mine asteroids. Now, once you're on the moon or Mars, you'll need to create a permanent settlement. What will you live in? Architectural, construction and 3D printing experience will help you create a sustainable long-term habitat. So we've seen that there are many opportunities when it comes to the infrastructure of space, which is a great thing. Now, one of the biggest changes in space over the years is that it's become commercial. The Australian government recently established the Australian Space Agency to help implement its space policy. Now, governments have space policy in order to benefit the nation. On the 1st of July, 2018, the Australian Space Agency was created to deliver this space policy and to develop the Australian space industry. So if you're a public servant, you now have the opportunity to be a part of the new space race. Did you know that international treaties and national regulations govern how we use space? With many companies now joining the new space race, they're encountering, or will encounter, new situations. Who crashed into my satellite? Can I mine that asteroid? And we'll need lawyers to sort this out. <laughs> That's right, the new space race needs lawyers, space lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> now these companies, they include existing space companies, or aerospace companies, they include other companies that are looking to move into the new space race, as well as entrepreneurs with their own startup companies in space. And all of these companies are looking for people with business skills. So if you can manage people, if you're good at selling and marketing, if you can forecast revenue, then there's a place for you in the new space race. Now you're probably thinking, is the new space race really worth it? And my answer to you is yes. Today, the global space economy is worth around 350 billion US dollars. And by 2040, this will triple to 
to over $1 trillion. And by the late 2040s, we're getting close to $3 trillion. The global space economy is growing, and so are the opportunities available to you in new space. From law to biology to sales, we've looked at a few ways you can be a part of the new space race. But there's many that we haven't looked at, and there are many that just don't exist at the moment, but will in a few years' time. As a boy, what seemed like a distant dream tucked away in a drawer is now a reality for me and for all of you. You don't need to move overseas to be a part of the new space race. We're essentially seeing a turning point in space. Today, this is what I'm building. Small satellites, or small spaceships as I like to call them. When you leave here, I want you to consider one thing, and that is, what will your role be in the new space race? Thank you.